Episode 155 CBP Cast with guest Andreas Fertige, recorded June 20th, 2018. This episode of CBP Cast is sponsored by PVS Studio, one of the most powerful static analyzers for your C, C, and C Sharp source code. PVS Studio will let you detect errors and potential vulnerabilities at the earliest stage. Try the demo version today at viva64.com. This episode, we discuss more news and trip reports from the Rappers Will ISO meeting. Then we talk to Andreas Fertig. Andreas talks to us about CPP Insights tool and more. Welcome to episode 155 of CPP Cast, the first podcast for C developers by C developers. I'm your host, Rob Burfing, joined by my co host, Jason Turner. Jason, how are you doing today? I'm all right, Rob. So I guess you decided to change the intro there, huh? Yeah. Well, we talked about it for a couple of weeks. So I decided to actually pull the trigger on it. Why not? Okay. Well, you know, it's kind of fun to keep it as the only one, even <laughs> if it was a bit of a lie. Yeah. Well, we'll see how everyone reacts to that one. <laughs> Uh, you have anything you wanted to share, Jason? Uh, I Well, I'm traveling again at the moment, so I apologize if the audio sounds a little weird. I have my lower quality headphones, and I'm in an echoey room, I feel like. But you'll probably take care of that in post-processing. Yeah, hopefully. Um, and you, maybe some of our followers might have seen some mentions on Twitter that I had been uh, scheduled to do a keynote at ASML in Eindhoven, Netherlands. That was yesterday, and that was... Uh, a fun time, uh, late night. And, uh, yeah, so I'm in the Netherlands at the moment. Awesome. Okay. Well, uh, at the top of our episode, I'd like to read a piece of feedback. Uh, this week we got an email from Nicholas and he wrote in saying in the last episode, Jason said that he would like to know what else got merged into C plus plus 20 that Bryce didn't mention in the Reddit thread. Uh, well for that, you can look, that up in post meeting milestones on GitHub under the C++ draft project. And he included a link and he wrote, also wrote a uh, spoiler context per swap is in it. Anyway, thanks for the great episode. Keep it up. So that's something you were looking for, Jason context per swap. I did look at the C++ draft things that had gotten merged in from this link and am happy to see uh, that the context per swap related things got in which means that we've got context for sorting in C20 now. Awesome. Okay, well, we'd love to hear your thoughts about the show as well. Uh, you can always reach out to us on Facebook, Twitter, or email us at feedback at cbpcast.com. And don't forget to leave us a review on iTunes. Joining us today is Andreas Fertige. Uh, Andreas holds an MS in computer science from Karlsruhe University of Applied Sciences. Since 2010, he has been a software developer and architect for Philips Medical Systems, focusing on embedded systems. He has a profound practical and theoretical knowledge of C++ at various operating systems, and he works freelance as a lecturer and trainer. Besides this, he develops macOS applications and is the creator of cppinsights.io. Andreas, welcome to the show. Welcome. So when you say you develop Mac OS uh, applications, you just mean on the side for the fun of it, like you have apps in the app store kind of thing? Yeah, it, it, it's a bit for the fun. That's true. And I, I have them in the app store. Um, so you can buy them. So I make a little bit of money with them, but well, not enough to retire yet. <laughs> well, why don't you go ahead and tell us what those apps are? Um. There, there started w with an idea because I do my presentation, my talks, all that stuff with um, tech. And the uh, result then is a PDF file, which is not so good for presenting. If you like to have some indication how long the presentation is running and if you like to have notes and such things. So I created this one app, which is called Projector. 
um, which basically takes in a PDF file and an additional notes file and it presents yeah. and gives you also one of these nice presenter screens. Right. So that's if you cool. present using like PowerPoint, that's the type of thing it'll do for you. But if you want to use a PDF, it kind of gives you that presentation view similar to what PowerPoint does. Yeah, basically a reduced view, but it does the job nicely. It shows you the current slide, the next slide, and then the notes to the current one, as well as time uh, elapsed and current uh, time, things like that. Oh, that's mm. awesome. Yeah. Okay, so Andreas, uh, we have a couple news articles to discuss. Uh, feel free to comment on any of these, and then we'll start talking to you more about CPP Insights and some other stuff you have going on, okay? Yeah, fine. Okay, so this first one is uh, CPP Task Flow, and this is a C++ header-only library to help quickly build parallel programs with complex task dependencies. And this looks like a pretty powerful library. Um, building like such complicated tasking is not really something I have a whole lot of experience with, but uh, you know, some of the examples look pretty cool. Do you have a chance to look at this, Jason? I did look at it, and I have worked on projects where I think I might have used something like this. I don't currently work on a project where I could use this, but I agree. It looks pretty, um, it looks impressive anyhow. Yeah. Uh, Andres, did you have a chance to look at this one? Yes, I did, and um, I can also say it, it looks amazing, very, very simple and, and basic, um, but um, yeah, I don't do much of that's threading things either, so I cannot really tell whether it's good or not. It just looks very handsome. Okay. Uh, next one is uh, an update to the stood in bed proposal. And we talked about this one when we had uh, Jean Manide on the show, but uh, I thought it was just worth mentioning because he did put out an update. Um, and I believe he was just at the Jacksonville C meeting, so I'm not sure. Uh, Never as well. Yeah, rep as well, not Jacksonville. Um, so I'm not sure what kind of changes he made after that meeting, but uh, he did put out an updated proposal. Yeah, I agree. I was looking to see, oh, let's see, it does say what the revisions were. Uh, future directions, changed a couple of names of things, add code demonstrating old way and motivating examples, and incorporates feedback. Yeah. Okay. And then the next one, uh, we have a trip report from JetBrains, and this is for uh, the Rappers Will uh, C++ meeting. And uh, this one is written by uh, Phil Nash and Tamor Doomler. And they went over a, a lot of the news that we talked about last week uh, with the Rappers Will meeting. Uh, modules, having the converged uh, modules proposal, concepts, coroutines. Uh, they did talk a little bit about the... Um, SG15 tools group, uh, which they went to uh, as part of JetBrains. And um, that was you know, interesting to read. They they had members from the Build 2 package manager, VC package, and Conan. That was kind of the focus of this meeting. It seemed to be on package management. And I it sounds like they discussed whether or not the standards should kind of create like a standard package management like API, um, but it sounds like they kind of voted against doing that, but are mm -hmm. kind of encouraging the uh, these different package managers to work together kind of outside the scope of the committee. Okay. Yeah. Anything else you wanted to highlight from that? Um, I feel like I wasn't paying close enough attention or something, that I missed something, but I was surprised here to read for coroutines that they said that the committee doesn't seem to be clear as to whether or not our current the current coroutines pro proposal is the appropriate way forward and that Google presented a counter proposal. Yeah. And we briefly mentioned that and it had the different uh, syntax for like awaiting a uh, coroutine, right? I thought that that was an addition to what Gore had been proposing, not a replacement, but um, I don't know. Andreas, do you know? Um, I wasn't in the room when this was discussed, but I wouldn't necessarily say it's a counter proposal. I think they try to solve so far unsolved issues, if you like to call that. Okay. And um, 
yeah, it, it was their view how it it could be solved. They also acknowledged that the time is very limited if we like to get this in C plus plus twenty. So they mentioned this in a few uh, parts in the paper that some of these things may come later. So it may be a two or three step approach, but they seem to have real concerns with parts of the the current coroutines. Um, so you routine. attended the meeting then. I did, but not this part. I was in Rappersville, um, but I, I do not really recall where I was when coroutines were on the table. Well, that's fine, but is there anything else that you would like to mention about the meeting? Uh, yeah, I mean, aside from the fact that it was really huge and uh, <laughs> awesome, um, there, there are, I think there are a couple of nice things coming up uh, on the the const expert path. So we, we already heard there will be a const expert swap. There will also be, uh, or I'm not, I'm, I'm not really sure if when I now say there will be, it's not meant that it will be in C++ 20. Um, I'm not always sure on that, but there will be um, relaxed well conditions for const expert so that you can say new in mm. the const expert context as long as you say delete at the end. Um, from one point of view, it never happened. As long as you just use the memory during the, the const expert doing its thing, it, it never hits the binary, so it doesn't matter if you say new and delete. Um, I think that's that's quite impressive and there will be uh, it was in the paper, it was called const expert bang, so a const expert function which is truly const expert uh, such a way that the compiler will um, give you an error if does not meet all the const expert requirements. I think that's that's brilliant. Mm. Um, th this can help to solve a couple of problems, and there are other things on the on the const expert path. Well, being able to do new in a const expert context changes a lot of things. Yes, they, I think they needed to get um, const expert containers and stuff like this, so right. they they can allocate at compile time, and yeah. That's uh, interesting because it's still only Clang that supports heap elision optimization, which is allowed by the standard. And I feel like these things seem similar because you're kind of heap alighting at compile time. And it makes me wonder if uh, having to implement this will mean that some of the other compilers will ultimately get some heap elision for non const expert code kind of supported. Or maybe these will go down two completely different paths and it doesn't make any sense at all that I just mentioned them together. <laughs> <laughs> well, we will see. Okay, and then the last article we have to discuss uh, is from the Register. And uh, we talked either one or two weeks ago about uh, Bjarna's paper, uh, Remember the Vasa. And this was an interview with Bjarna uh, relating to that Remember the Vasa uh, paper he wrote and kind of the warning to the ISO me you know committee to uh, n not kind of heap on all these little proposals and kind of focus on the bigger story. And uh, it was an interesting article, interesting interview um, to kind of you know, expand out what Bjarna's thoughts are on the future of C++ and C++20. And there, there are a couple of interesting things that he mentioned. Um, one thing which he brought up, which was news to me, is uh, he mentioned the SG15 Tools Group. But he also mentioned that there would be an education group forming, which I guess would have a focus on, you know, how we can improve the standard so that C++ can become a more teachable language. I, hmm. I guess that's what I'm inferring, at least. I had heard something about that, but I, I haven't read too much about it. I uh, it, it was a if I recall it correctly it was Wednesday evening it was one of the evening sessions um, and the uh, it was the uh, the time when the direction group was announced or this paper was um, shown and I, I'm also not not completely clear in in which direction this teaching group will go but the common consensus was that it seems to be uh, not nice for the C++ community that um, other languages 
come first in in, in mm. teaching um, uh, on the university. So that probably is one thing they like to get improved. And so the question is, can we tell how to teach C++ or even does it help to improve the language if we know how to teach it so we can simplify it or whatever? It's, I think it's not really clear, but it's, it's clear that teaching can help their understanding. Right. And as someone who attended the Rappers Will meeting, um, did this remember the Vasa paper come up a lot, you know, as a point of discussion about, you know, whether or not, you know, this proposal is, is worth being considered or something like that? Um, Piana mentioned the, uh, I think the whole story about the Vasa mm-hmm. um, it was quite interesting to hear that one. And yeah, the, the, the concern is that uh, with 160 people attending Rappersville, um, there are a lot uh, people involved and how to focus on, on well, the, I don't know how to put this, the, the interesting things or the, the things which really make C++ a better language and not by the same time meaning it gets closer to C Sharp or to some other language, but stay on its own and be excellent at that. And um, yeah, the, I think the story goes that Avasa could have been saved um, because they made a trial run, um, discovered that it will not survive, but didn't tell the king. And let it sink, <laughs> more or less. And uh, yeah, the, the idea is don't uh, or do tell if you have feelings that C++ may sink or so. Be so sure do to the tell tests the king. and yeah, tell the king. But there is no king, so that's the problem here. Okay. Well, uh, why don't we start by talking about uh, CPP insights, Andreas? Can you? Just give us an overview on, on what that project is. Yes, sure. Um, the the project or the idea behind the project is to well to show the parts of the things the compiler does for us behind the scenes. Um, I like to mention it's not the way I like people to write code. It's just to see what a compiler does and not to say, oh, that's awesome. It's a whole lot of code. I, I should write that. No. <laughs> um, it, it, the idea is to um, to use it, for example, for teaching um, because it's sometimes hard. Well, what's the difference between plus plus I and I plus plus? You cannot tell without looking closer. Is I a class or is I a trivial type? Um, if it's a trivial type, it doesn't really matter for the for the sake of performance. Um, but if it's a class, then there is an operator involved involved maybe. And this is what what insights shows. It shows you where operators are in involved, invoked. It shows transformations like, hey, what's behind range-based for loops? They just boil down to regular for loops. Um, things like that so that you can also get a feeling how heavy or how lightweight is one of these features, which is interesting for the embedded sector I'm in. So I like to know how this stuff works. Generating lambdas, for example, the they they seem cheap. They in most cases they are, but it helps to know what's really happening there. So it was your work uh, working on embedded devices that first inspired you to create this project. Um, <clears throat> partially, the inspiration came, or that the idea came roughly a year ago when I was preparing a talk for NDC Oslo at the time called Fast and Small. Uh, in this talk, I showed examples like uh, range-based for loops, lambdas, and how they are handled internally. And I also used this in, in one of my lectures and in the training. And then I thought, okay, I, I did this thing now. I converted it four or five times and all the time in different ways. And if I look at tools like the Compiler Explorer, it's it's really easy, right? I, I mean, I type the code in and I get the result on the right. 
most of the time and I can choose the different optimization uh, levels and then I see how it acts or performs. And so I started writing at a time a really, really small Clang AST based tool which transformed more or less just a range based for loop and the lambda. But that was enough at the time. And then I added more and more features or statements the tool understood um, well till now and it it's not complete it, it doesn't understand all the statements it you can write in C++ but a good amount of them at least so I guess you kind of alluded to how it's implemented then you you're using the Clang AST in some way I used the Clang AST it's a lip lip Clang or lib tooling based tool. So I, uh, in in that time, I got very keen looking at the Clang AST. Um, but uh, I, I used the, the AST for for the initial presentation. It's just it's not so much readable, or it was not at the time for me. I, I now grow grew more to it. <laughs> but having all these pointers and then the, the tree view and. The, it's not C++. It's an abstract view. Um, and I did like to have it in, in a C++ way because I'm writing C++. Looking in the compiler explorer, how the, the resulting binary is, is, is one really helpful thing. But sometimes I just like to know, oh gosh, why is this behaving so strange? And C++ insights may help to to uncover this. I had the chance yesterday. I started watching your talk, Jason, about um, initialize a list is broken, mm -hmm. and I punched in a couple of your early examples into C++ insights, and I discovered it shows some of the cases um, where you mentioned, okay, here in this, I think it was a vector initialized um, with curly braces, um, three comma three. And in this case, you get an initializer list, which is not obvious. Right. C++ Insights shows that. So it could be helpful to understand what, what's happening in some, some cases. Yeah, I will say I have actually used your tool in a training that I did last Thursday, and it'll probably come up again this Friday. Oh, excellent. <laughs> it... Uh, yeah, so uh, maybe if we can clarify for the listeners, you type in C++ and you're effectively showing us, if I understand correctly, how the compiler sees that code? At least I try to. Uh, be okay. aware that it's my uh, my understanding of what the compiler does, my understanding of how the Clang AST is, and um, I may be wrong, and I may have written some wrong code in, in some places. But basically, yes. If I do a good job and if everything is right, then it's it's more or less what the compiler, the, the, the full picture of the compiler. Okay. So it is just Clang then, like, you know, Visual Studio might be interpreting a, a for loop in a completely different way. Um, partially true. Um, yeah. it, it, it is just Clang, yes, that, that's good to mention. Um, mm -hmm. So be aware of that. It's, it also depends um, if I build it on Linux, um, which lose, use, uses glibc um, by default, or on my Mac, which uses lib, um, C++, sorry, glib, no, lib stud C++ is on Linux, and lib C++ is on Mac OS. And you can see the different implementations. For, for example, for std string, um, it does essentially the same, but the template is a little bit different. So interesting. Yeah, yeah, that that are the thing, things. But for the for the range based for loop example, that's written in the standard how it should be, and I don't think oh, okay. they really bother changing that. Um, I'm not really sure about the lambdas. They are also in the standard, but there are for sure few, well, open scenarios where the implementers have, have their freedom. Yeah, it has, 
been my um, experience so far that all the compiler vendors tend to have taken the same approach to things in lambdas that I might have thought were open to interpretation. So there must be one fairly obvious way, I guess, to implement them in many places. Yeah, yeah. it looks to me the same. Yeah. So are there any um, limitations to the tool that uh, you're aware of or that maybe you uh, plan on fixing? Well, sure. Um, f- first of all, it's it's not complete yet. Um, mm. it, it has, depending now on, on how how your knowledge on, on Clang and AST mattress are, it, it uses Clang AST mattress to <laughs> match construct, constructs I know that I can transform. So, and in the context. So it may be... Um, no, I do not currently transform the whole file, just pieces out of it. Um, I, I rewrite uh, if statements, for loops, range-based for loops, and then a lot of things. But if they appear in in different context, the tool currently may not rewrite them. And that comes from the uh, initial fact that I wanted to just transform range-based for loops in lambdas, and I have the plan to to convert it in a way such that it rewrites the whole file so that you see really everything. Um, that, that's that's the one thing. I also suppress some things I can show right now. Um, all the implicit casts. But I oh. decided that... Uh, so and I do not suppress all of them, but a l- couple of them because they tend to really increase the output by a lot. So I think that's okay. We should make the users of C++ feel the pain of the implicit. <laughs> 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 yeah, yeah, maybe. That, that could also be uh, in the future an option to turn it on or off the the well verbosity level or something like that hmm. so that's the um, that's the one thing it also has no c plus plus twenty support at least not i'm that I'm aware of currently <laughs> so this is definitely something coming up soon I think that there are there are bugs in like uh, get um, bug reports or issues and I try to fix them. I know that the most interesting thing seems to be lambdas. So I, the, the most issues or reports I got from all over the web are related to lambdas. And they are pretty hard. I, I can tell you that. At least if you try to rewrite them, I, I don't know a thing about implementing them, them in the compiler and do a good job there. But it's really hard to transform them, and there on that part, I improved. But I'm I'm still not sure. I covered all cases. I I got really interesting cases. The, the thing is, if if I transform something, then I need to put this result somewhere better at the right position. So for lambda, it's it's close to where you declared and defined it. Mm-hmm. Um, and you can introduce lambdas, for example, in a function call. That's f- what we do with a lot of the, the std algorithm functions. So we, we pass a lambda for the sort, for comparison, and, and stuff like this. And now think about this. Where should I place the class for the lambda? I cannot right. place it in the function call because there it is not allowed. But Clang, on the other hand, in its AST can do that because it does hmm. not have to to uh, consider the same rules in the AST as I, as a developer, have when I'm writing the code. So that was one really well interesting insight I got there. So. Clang can, or other compilers as well, can do other things there because they just passed that lambda and blew it up to a class. Why not directly put it into 
that function call that doesn't matter anymore at this point, but for me it does if I transform it. So I must find the the best point before to insert the uh, the lambda class. And I saw it, I solved that, and then somebody came up and showed me a lambda. I, I never even thought about this. You can obviously uh, in the capture list of the lambda declare another lambda which you're capturing by copy. I was just made aware so of that that's because of the question a student had asked myself, actually, yeah. Ah, okay. And you can also pass then in a lambda in the call operator when you call the lambda. Okay. So, so the, there are some cases I, I never thought about before, but now I know that they're there, and I did my best to also cover them. Uh, and as far as I know, they, they work correctly by now. But they are, the, so there are these things. Are there other limitations? Well, it does only transform C++, but I think that's, that's okay. Um, I, I, I <laughs> yeah. got it. I, I don't know where this was, but somewhere I saw an interesting comment when, when I first posted about the tool, it, it hit Twitter and Reddit and, all that, and I don't know where I read this, but somebody said, oh, I all the time thought that CPP stands for the C preprocessor. Hmm. So wow. CPP in, in, uh, um, yeah, in a new URL seems not to be the best. <laughs> seems kind of confusing, but yeah, now it's we out. We don't really so. have the choice in a URL, though, yeah, unfortunately. No. Yeah, maybe we shall change the language name, but that's also, well... <sighs> Not so easy. Well, aside from the lambdas, uh, that's you know related to bug reports. Is there anything surprising that you learned when you were developing it? Something that surprised you about C plus plus, perhaps? Yeah, probably more than I can remember. Um, <laughs> I uh, during the the rappers will in uh, my Oslo trip, I had a lot of time. Um, and planes and, and trains. So I, I started um, transforming class templates. I didn't do that before because it you know, was hard, but I had the time then and I did it. And while doing this, it was the first time that the, the tool transforms a, a whole class. Because if you have a template class and invoke it, I have to generate, well, the entire class, but with the correct types and, and so on. And while doing that, I stumbled over the fact that we can now have um, inline variable initializations in classes. So I don't need to initialize a certain variable in its class constructor. I can also directly initialize it. I think right. everybody already knows that, right? Uh, I am aware of it. Yeah. So, so. So, and what I came across is how does this initialization work? Okay. And surprisingly, the answer is, this may be related to Clang, I don't know, but the answer is easy. This initialization gets just moved into the constructor as one of the initializations of the constructor, which surprised me. Oh, it's, it's, okay. it's very easy. Um, it's, I think it doesn't require special rules there, just take this value, take this variable name and then put it in there and you're fine. Right. So that's that's one thing I can remember. Structured bindings are also a beautiful thing to learn a lot about. Um, Clang seems to use them in a very easy way. So a couple of examples I, I also have shown on slides and I see in the web seem to be not true for Clang. So if, if you have um, just a struct with, I don't know, two members, it's such a struct called point and it's an int and x and epsilon in it. And if you do this decomposing with structured bindings, the most examples, including mine, show that there is a get involved, something like std get, which gets this value out of, of this point struct. And Clang is, seems to be smart enough to 
don't use any get there. It just says, okay, if you're struck point P, then I call P dot X and P dot epsilon and that's it. So no mm. further magic there. So sometimes okay. the web seems to be not completely correct, at least for Clang. Right. I want to interrupt the discussion for just a moment to bring you a word from our sponsors. PVS Studio is a static code analyzer that can find bugs in the source code of C, C++, and c -sharp programs. The analyzer is able to classify errors according to the common weakness enumeration, so it can help remove many defects in code before they become vulnerabilities. The analyzer uses many special techniques to identify even the most complex and non-obvious bugs. For example, data flow analysis mechanisms, which is implemented in the tool, has detected a very interesting bug in the Protobuf project. You can read about this bug in the article February 31st. The link is under the description of this podcast episode. The analyzer works under Windows, Linux, and macOS environments. PVS Studio supports analysis of projects that are intended to be built by such common compilers as Visual C++, GCC, Clang, ARM compiler, and so on. The analyzer supports different usage scenarios. For example, you can integrate it with Visual Studio and with SonarCube. The Blame Notifier tool can notify developers about errors that PVS Studio detects during night run by mail. You can get acquainted with PVS Studio features in detail on viva64.com. Uh, you mentioned uh, that you're working on this on your way to Rapperswil. Um, what kind of role did you have at the uh, Rapperswil committee meeting? Oh, I was there, there privately just observing. Oh. Um, nothing... Nothing special. No uh, papers that you submitted on your own? No. I uh, I did thought about this const expert bang, and I had a proposal of my own, but it was not 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 nearly as good as David's <laughs> and I think Richard's paper was, so it didn't make sense to come up with this. So I was just there to, to listen, um, which was quite amazing. Is this the first meeting you've attended? Yes. Yes, it was the first meeting. It, it was three and a half hours away from uh, where I live, so that was a good chance to to go there once at least. And there are more meetings com coming up in Europe, so I may attend more of them. Do you have any advice for anyone considering attending as an observer like you did? Sleep a lot before. Because <laughs> it tends to be uh, early and uh, late. Um, that <laughs> I, I was I was really really tired after that meeting, or that whole week. And oh, by the way, it's it's a six day week, so Saturday is also concerned uh, for working or used for working. And the, the people there are really eager. I I think to that's my observation to get the things done to to get new better c++ so well expect them to be really eager to work um that's what i have seen so far what uh what meetings were you able to attend like which uh working group did you go to i spent most of my time in ewg but i was also in lewg so i was for example there when when studix uh, embedded was presented um, that was in LEWG. I was there when Herb Sutter um, presented a portion out of his um, static exceptions proposal. And EWG was, I think, most of the time modules, concepts, and one one day or half of a day was then the const expert things. So that's what I have attended, roughly. Did you... Okay get a feeling for how uh embed was uh what what the committee thought of the standard embed in pro proposal if i recall it correctly um they support it with with span it seems to be a good solution hmm. um it, it's i think it's also received as a long standing pain there are the author of the paper also mentioned that the others uh, tried to solve this problem in the past. So he's aware of that. The community, community is aware of that. Um, overall, I, I think it's, it's, a, it's a good thing and it has the support from, from the standard committee. Yeah. 
I, w- I wonder if we'll see it in C plus plus twenty or not. Ultimately, I would like to see it personally. Yeah, it's, it's worth mentioning that uh, the C plus plus twenty feature freeze is the next meeting, right? Uh, yes. Yeah, yeah, and I cannot tell you how how far in the progress it is. I think it's in the beginning, um, but uh, yeah, I cannot tell. But it's it's yeah. It has to hurry if it likes to be in C plus plus twenty, at least according to the current schedule. I should hurry up and write those ten proposals I've been making to meaning to make as well. <laughs> yeah, you should. Yeah, right. <laughs> uh, you also mentioned that you you uh, were there when Herb discussed his uh, static exception proposal. How was that taken? And you said it was just a piece of it that he was presenting. Yes, it was all only the. Um, the piece about if we agree on what's an error and, and what's an exception. So one example he showed was the case of out of memory. Yeah, on the Linux, if you call malloc, you always get something back. It may just not be valid memory and you may realize it way later in the program when you actually try to use that memory really uh, yeah happens to be yeah and so the, the question is can you do anything against the things and the, the, the fun part is if, if linux really runs out of memory it starts trying to kill a random process so it may not even be the process which caused the out of memory situation so it can then kill you or it can just kill a random other process but so the thing is there are certain things if we change behavior then nobody will notice because the people running in an out of memory situation today will either terminate now or later they, they cannot know they cannot test it and if you say okay that that's that's something that's not an error because it cannot be recovered well, then that's fine too. So, so roughly that route. Probably Herb can explain it a lot better. But it was received really, really well. If I recall the polls correctly, then it was only strongly in favor and in favor. And nobody voted neutral or anything about against. Wow. That's really good. And he's definitely not trying to get that paper into C20, though. He's, he's aiming for 23, I guess. I said it was just a portion out of the paper to get a better feeling if it's okay. all right to to continue with that. He had a couple of examples, which are in the, in the paper, which is available, um, where he's quoting how it would, how what impact it would have on, on certain implementations. I think Microsoft Office, things like that uh, were in there, which could get rid of a couple of I think they, they have abstraction layers in there to, to to ask if this operation would succeed or not uh, so that they do not run into an exception things like that and they could remove all that there are other corner cases so it's just to think the first start of the proposal and I I'm very sure that it's not C plus plus 20 and I'm not really certain if it will make it to C plus plus 23. Uh, it's a long time, so probably, but I don't know. It seems to be also a, a huge um, change. Wow. Okay. Uh, you also recently attended NDC Oslo, right? Yes, I did. It was last week. How was oh. that conference? The um, the conference is great. I uh, had the opportunity to be there this the second time, and it's it's a big conference. They have nine to ten tracks in parallel. Um, it's a three day conference. There are a lot of people there. I I, I don't know, one thousand, two thousand, something like that over the days. Um, it's surprisingly quiet for that amount of people <laughs> um, it's, it's just really nice they uh, serve food all day 
which is also <laughs> brilliant. <laughs> yeah, no, not so much for the weight, but <laughs> um, for other things, so, so you get snacks there, you get drinks, um, yeah, which makes it really easy and, and yeah, friendly to, to hang out with, with people. <laughs> they have, I think, uh, not the strongest C++ focus. Okay. Um, they have all sorts of things, so C Sharp, JavaScript, also more uh, more personal things um, they sometimes share. So it's yeah, it's a, a huge diversity you you will see there from from talks. Sounds interesting. Yeah, and much larger than I would have assumed. Yeah, um, I think it's definitely worth going there once, uh, at least to to see it yourself. Um, I, I think it's 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 one of the greatest conferences I've been so far. Oh wow! Um, but yeah, but, it, don't expect too much from the C plus plus side. It's it's more the people and the conference itself than than the C plus plus part. Now, did you say earlier that you presented something? Yes, I did. Okay. Um, so there, on Wednesday and Thursday, there was something like a C plus plus track. So the most okay. talks in in one room or in in one track were about C plus plus. So, but but yeah, that's it. The uh, what did you it, present? Yeah. Uh, sorry again. Oh, what was it that you presented at that track? Um, it was a story about how to determine the uh, number of elements in an array, uh, which oh. is surprisingly interesting. So you you ch just quickly you you all know this size of array divided by size of array um, element at uh, zero thing. Yes. So, okay, it's not type safe and it's not nice. And I tried to improve it. And that's what the talk was about. And it's surprisingly hard, I can tell you. <laughs> <laughs> Lots of uh, template uh, hackery to get there or something different? Yeah, it's a mixture uh, of templates and const expert. Okay. Um, I I, found, I I came up with a quick solution. Interestingly, it's the same the, it, that meanwhile is in the C++ 17 standard, but it does not work in in all cases I came across. So I, I think I needed four or five um, implementations till I made it with all the code <laughs> I know. <laughs> I'm not sure if it's really the rock solid version. Um, yeah. <laughs> Okay. Well, Andreas, it's been great having you on the show today. Uh, was there anything else uh, we missed that you want to talk about with CPP Insights? Well, if, if if you have bug reports, please file them issues. If you like to get involved, I would be happy with that. Um, it's open to anybody, so I hope to, to get a, a community behind this. Um, I talked to a couple of people I'm not really a Windows user, so if somebody can assist with the Windows support, that would be great. Um, I think it should work, but I'm, I'm really not sure. Um, oh yeah. And to, um, for the, for the merchandising part, I opened a t-shirt shop today. Oh, oh okay. To, uh, I think it's probably the same you have to, to let the people buy t-shirts with the CPP Insights logo on it and so and the money could help to improve the infrastructure or if it really goes great buy me a little bit of time to improve the project on my own but I'm, I'm not thinking so far I think for infrastructure it would be great okay so you... well, we'll make sure to put a link to that in the show notes yes definitely wonderful Okay. Well, thank you so much today for uh, coming on today, Andres. Thanks for having me. Yeah, thanks for coming. Thanks so much for listening in as we chat about C++. I'd love to hear what you think of the podcast. Please let me know if we're discussing the stuff you're interested in. 
Or if you have a suggestion for a topic, I'd love to hear about that too. You can email all your thoughts to feedback at cppcast.com. I'd also appreciate if you like CPPCast on Facebook and follow CPPCast on Twitter. You can also follow me at Rob W. Irving and Jason at LeftKiss on Twitter. And of course, you can find all that info and the show notes on the podcast website at cppcast.com. Theme music for this episode is provided by podcastthemes.com. Website at cppcast.com. Theme music for this episode is provided by podcastthemes.com.